Guys, we are here with the Citadel head coach Thompson. And coach, the first question is, and it's so different recruiting and developing players at the Citadel. What are some of the challenges that you and your coaching staff have to face that other coaches at other programs don't have to deal with? Well, number one is we've just got to find the right fit for our program, and it's not the right fit for everybody. The hardest thing that we have to contend with is knowing when it's time to move on. You know, we've recruited a guy, we've recruited a guy. Somewhere along the line, it just wasn't a good fit, or we just kind of knew that it wasn't going to work out. So we need to keep large numbers. We need to recruit what we can recruit, and then we've got to be careful. You know, we don't want to stretch on too many guys. We're always going to be a developmental program. They've got to have certain tangible things that uh, uh, that we see can fit into our program. We can't stretch on a lot of those guys. We've got to take what best fits us. Um, being that is if you lose a guy in your freshman class or even in your sophomore classes, it, it affects you not for just that year, but it affects you for the next couple of years. Um, and it's it's been fortunate enough that we've been able to pull from the fifth year portal to help us out. But you, you know, once again, we're not making our living in there. It, there. There's a ratio of undergraduate to graduate that you want to maintain. And so is that, is that how you and your staff keep a balance? We're going to focus on the recruiting trail first, and then the, the when the holes or needs pop up, then we'll go to the transfer portal to fill those? For the most part, you know, we're, we're, this year we signed 16, and we're going to take 11 out of the transfer portal. So somewhere in there, that's the, there's a balance. It's still new to us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, is once we realized we, did, we weren't going to fill these particular spots, and there's certain spots at our place, believe it or not, that are hard to fill. Right. You know, there's a, maybe it's a wide receiver spot that's hard to fill. Defensive backs can be hard to fill at times. Um, because, you know, for one reason or another, the military is not an attraction to a lot of those guys for some seats sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, defensive line can be challenging at times. So you've got to uh, find those positions that you're lacking and go ahead and fill those gaps in to make sure that you have a strong roster. One of the players we've highlighted on our show is cornerback Destin Mack. I think he's one of the best players in the FCS at his position. Speak a little bit about his development and his role as a leader for the Citadel. Destin's changed completely. Coming in, uh, Destin really didn't play a whole lot of defense. We had him at safety to start out with. Didn't play a whole lot of defense in high school. Came from a small school in Macon. Played a lot of running back and A-back. The reason we recruited him is because we had him at a camp where he ran 4-5, so we knew he, he could run. He got, he's got great size to him. He's got great physicality to him. But we, once again, it was one of those things where we just had a need at corner for him. So when Coach Grantham came in, we moved him from safety to corner, and he's been a great fit at corner. And not only that, he's a guy that got through his freshman year, and freshman year's challenging at our place, moves on to a sophomore year, junior year, and the next thing you know is he goes from being a guy that was you know, just a little bit down and out at times to a guy that's completely changed by the time he's a fourth or fifth year guy, the maturity level. He's a part of our leadership council right now. Um, he's bringing the younger guys along. You know, a guy that struggled through the military part of it is talking to our younger guys saying, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. Right. Um, he wasn't used to it at all, but he's really, really done an outstanding job with it. Um, glad to have him back for another year. I think he's a great player myself. One of the storylines this all season was, of course, Alex Ramsey coming back to the program after his transfer. Speak a little bit about what brought him back and what role he's going to play for the Citadel this season. So he, he did come back last season for us and really was starting to make a push in the fall camp and unfortunately took a bad injury. And uh, he's a very talented football player. Uh, no doubt he is a force in the Southern Conference, as we all know. Uh, he's still struggling with that. He's coming back on his rehab. We hope to have him back sometime midway through the fall. Okay. And the other, the other big storyline, lose a quarterback to the transfer portal and Jalen Adams heads to North Fulton State. What has the quarterback battle been like? And I know it's a unique scheme. What are you looking for in a starting quarterback? There's two main issues that we really want to attack in the quarterback situation, and that is um, a guy that's smart enough to handle it. There's times where we're going to read different guys and pitch off of different guys, and we're going to try to change those guys up, but the defense may change those guys as well. So we need a guy that's smart enough to understand that, smart enough to get you in the right play, smart enough to get you out of a bad play, um, and then you got to be tough enough to be able to run the ball. I mean, there's going to be days where you're going to run it 25 to 30 times. So we're looking for all those different personality traits. Those guys are the best leaders because they can do all those things. And speak a little bit about the intricacies of preparing for a triple option, because, I mean, you, you, you're the head coach of a triple option team. Why do teams struggle so much defending the triple option? A lot of it is the unknown. Is You don't see a lot of what we do. There's not a lot of teams that are under center running triple option anymore. 
from a you know a, a gap scheme, you know, which is what we're doing. A lot of teams have gone to a zone scheme. Uh, if they're doing it, they're doing it out of the shotgun. They've adjusted that, and uh, we do a little bit of that. But to be honest with you, is we want to stick to what other people aren't doing. Is if we try to do what everybody else is doing, we we would struggle a little bit more. We don't. Um, it's kind of our. Um, it's our leveling of the playing field. So it's a little bit of a challenge because not a lot of teams know how to know what you're doing essentially. But we've been in the league so long yeah. that when you face the same defensive coordinators for nine straight years, yeah. you've got to be the one that's got to adjust and you've got to change and you've got to have some of the answers to some of the problems you're seeing. And for your defense, I asked Willie about this when he came on the show and he talked a little bit about how facing a triple option every day does help them prepare just in terms of being a better sound defense. Speak to that. Is how does it keep your defense disciplined facing that triple option every, every day in practice? Well, number one is it makes you tough. Because uh, you, when you are getting run after run after run, there's not a whole lot of break. There's not a whole lot of pass drops in there for linebackers. There's not a whole lot of pass rushes in there for um, defensive alignment. And that's number one, it makes you tougher. Uh, and then number two is you, you do have to be sound. Otherwise, the ball can get out and it can get out pretty quickly and get out for a ways. So uh, those guys are going to be fundamentally and, and hopefully technically sound uh, as to what they're doing against the option. And then a lot of our stuff does cross over. As you're going to see it anymore anywhere from a two technique, three technique, getting red all the way out to a five technique and sometimes uh, RPO. So you, in all those things, is, there's some sort of an option or some sort of a read in the, in the uh, evolution of football right now. And the final question, Coach, you've seen this team develop and mature throughout spring and summer workouts. What is different about this year's Citadel team compared to teams that you've previously coached? This team has been through a lot more adversity. This team has played a lot more football. This team has been through um, off seasons where we've had no off season. Uh, I finally felt like we can get to a certain point where we had a normal spring, we had a normal summer workout, and when we got to that point, they formed their own leadership council, which was nice. They had 14 guys that they pulled aside and said, we're tired of this. And we're finally back to a position where I think we can uh, compete and compete really, really well and have an opportunity to be able to win some football games here, and that's what they have they feel passionately about and, I, and I'm excited to get to coach these guys because for the first time in a long time this is a player-led group that I feel excited about. Coach I'm excited for the season guys make sure to tune in to watch the Citadel this year on the field but stay tuned for more content from SOCOM Media Day.